Mobile workstation ThinkPads had been an on and off thing for a number of years. In the IBM days, there were machines like the A30 series and the G40, which had high-end Pentium 4 or even desktop processors and packed in a lot of power for their time. IBM and later Lenovo would discontinue these workstation machines, instead having performance-oriented versions of their popular T-series, for example, the T42P and the T60P. In 2008, Lenovo reworked the ThinkPad line, renumbered the different models, and introduced a new series, the W series. This replaced the T61P as Lenovo's workstation ThinkPad. There were three models, the W500, which was pretty much just a beefed-up version of the T500 with more powerful graphics options, the W700DS, a massive behemoth of a mobile workstation which had a second screen, and the W700, which we're going to be looking at today. How well does this 11-year-old mobile workstation, the word mobile being used very, very loosely, perform with modern-day tasks? How well does everything work? Well, let's find out. The ThinkPad W700 was a big machine, even for 2008 standards. It puts some modern-day gaming laptops to shame with how big it is. It's more than one and a half inches thick and weighs almost eight and a half pounds. This thing is so massive that I ended up just carrying it around whenever I took it places. It just wasn't worth trying to squeeze into my book bag, even though it would fit with some effort. When these machines were new, they were some of the most powerful laptops that you could buy. At the low end, they came with Core 2 Duo processors. At the higher end, these came with Core 2 Extreme or Core 2 Quad processors. These machines also had fairly substantial graphics cards, in the form of the Quadro FX 2700M with 512 megabytes of VRAM, and the Quadro FX 3700M with 1 gigabyte of VRAM. They had a 17-inch display, with resolutions of 1440x900 or a nicer quality 1920x1200 panel. The machine takes up to 8 gigabytes of RAM in two slots, and has two 2.5-inch drive bays. When these machines were new, they were actually available in a RAID configuration. There's also two express card slots. To my knowledge, these are the only ThinkPads that have two express card slots. Higher-end models had a tablet built into the palm rest, which allowed you to use a pen to draw things on the screen. There was also an option for a color calibrator, which would be very useful for photo or video work. These machines also had a fingerprint reader, like most other ThinkPads, five USB ports, because, you know, you always need five ports, FireWire 400, DisplayPort, VGA, and DVI outputs, Ethernet, 56K modem, card reader, headphone microphone jacks, the other usual stuff. When you take this thing apart, what's really interesting is that the keyboard used is the same one that's used on the T400, T500, and even the T60 and T61. The numeric keypad on this model was a separate part, unlike newer ThinkPads with a numeric keypad built in, where it's all part of the keyboard. Upon taking the keyboard bezel off, we can also see one of the more interesting things about this laptop. This has to be the most upgradable ThinkPad in existence. Not only is the RAM and storage upgradable, as well as the processor, as was the case on most ThinkPads from the time period, but the graphics card is actually upgradable as well. Asterisk. My model has the Quadro FX 2700M. I was thinking about upgrading to the 3700M mostly for the increase in VRAM, but most people I talked to said that the actual graphics performance wasn't much better, and you mostly just had the system running hotter. I probably could have benefited from upgrading the processor, but I decided to leave the original processor in. Same goes for the display. Mine's a pretty low-end configuration, so it only has the 1440x900 display. The ThinkPad W701 was the immediate follow-up to the W700. Physically, it looks pretty much identical. The only real differences are that it uses first-generation Core i-series processors. Also, the lowest-end option is now a quad-core chip, unlike lower-end W700s that only came with the dual-core chip. You also had slightly updated graphics with the FX2800M and FX3800M, which both have 1GB of VRAM. These models also introduced an always-on USB port for charging devices such as a phone or an MP3 player. And the display options are now LED backlit, 
unlike the W700 which used CCFL backlit displays. This would be preferred since you have a brighter display and one that won't grow dim with time. It also saves on battery life, which this machine desperately needs. Even the massive 9-cell battery that's in here only lasts about an hour on a charge. Even when these machines were new, many reviews said that the battery life was only around 2-2.5 two to two and a half hours, and that's after optimizing everything to be more power efficient. Another difference with the W701 is that it has 4 RAM slots instead of 2, allowing for upgrades to 16GB of RAM. Something else that's interesting about the W700 series is that they use the same docking connector as other ThinkPads from the time period, such as my T60 and T500 ThinkPads that I have here. Unfortunately, while the docking connector is electronically the same on the W700 as it is on, say, the T500, it is physically incompatible with other ThinkPad docking stations. You had to get your own ThinkPad W700 series docking station, the standard ThinkPad docking stations don't work with this machine. Lenovo really missed an opportunity with making the docking connector incompatible with other docking stations of the time period, since the Lenovo ThinkPad Advanced docking station exists, which not only gave you the option for an extra optical drive bay, which could also be used to house an extra hard drive, but it also had a built-in PCI Express slot, allowing you to hook up an external GPU. And what more could you ask for? a crazy over-the-top mobile workstation with a docking station that would work with an external graphics card. That would be awesome. The ThinkPad W700 series also uses a completely different power connector from every other ThinkPad, which actually made it very difficult for me to find a power adapter for this thing. I found a few on eBay, but they were actually mislabeled W530 power connectors, which won't work with this machine. So enough talking, let's take a look at this thing. Opening it up, you can also see that this was the only classic ThinkPad, until the redesign in 2013, that had its own dedicated numeric keypad. The W700 series are also the only ThinkPads in existence that have two ThinkLights, because one just wasn't enough to light up this massive keyboard. Surprisingly, despite having two giant fans cooling everything, the machine doesn't get too loud even at full power. I decided to install Windows 10 on a 500GB 7200 RPM hard drive, and honestly, Windows 10 really needs an SSD to work properly. I mean, it runs fine on a hard drive, but it is slow as molasses. Compare that to Windows XP or Windows 7, which, while still benefiting from an SSD, run decently quickly on a good hard drive. Now, the ThinkPad W700 was not designed to work with Windows 10, I think the newest version of Windows that Lenovo officially supports on it is Windows 7. So I did have to do some hunting around to get certain drivers. I actually had to go to Dell's website to find the fingerprint reader driver, funny enough. And the track point scrolling doesn't work right unless you find a certain driver and then force Windows to use it. And I didn't bother messing with this for these tests, especially since for most tasks I was using an external mouse anyway. Oddly enough, other than the power manager, Trackpoint, and Fingerprint Reader, Windows 10 found all of the drivers for this machine, including the graphics card, which really surprised me. I had decided to install some software just to see how they would run on this old machine. YouTube playback was alright. It could play 720p 60 frame per second video without any stutters. It could handle 1080p 60 frame per second video, but it did have a few frame drops here and there. This machine also has top firing speakers in the keyboard bezel. They do sound like tin can speakers, so fidelity is not the highest here, but they do get reasonably loud and can fill up a room pretty nicely. So here's a rough approximation of what it sounds like. It even has a webcam, which... it exists. Yeah, I mean, 
to be honest, it still looks better than some modern laptop webcams, so considering that this thing is from 2008, I'm willing to let this one fly. I decided to install some productivity software just to see how it would run this machine. My tried and true video editor, Vegas Movie Studio, ran without any problems and was able to handle 1080p 60 frame per second video from my camcorder without too many stutters. Of course, this would not be an ideal daily machine for editing, but it gets the job done. I also installed AutoCAD 2020, which is the newest version as of this video, and while it did stutter a bit with more demanding 3D models, it could handle some basic drawings without any issue. I also installed Blender and loaded some pre-made files. However, I'm not going to lie, I don't know how to use Blender at all, so... You're just going to have to take my word for it that it can at least load some files and I can move around in it. <laughs> but it works. I'm not even going to bother installing Microsoft Office. I mean, if Office works on my ThinkPad T60, then you can bet that it's going to work just fine on this W700. Yeah, the Quadro FX 2700M or any of these graphics cards were never really meant for gaming. They were pretty powerful back in their day. So I decided to try a few games on here. Planicoaster disappointed me. When I tried to run it, it complained about the graphics card not supporting the newest version of DirectX. I also tried running the hottest game of 2019, Apex Legends, and yeah, it didn't work. Apparently this processor's too old for it, which is to be expected, it's an 11-year-old chip. But I was still a little bit disappointed, especially considering last year's hottest game, Fortnite, ran. That's not to say it was a pleasant experience. I mean, look at this, this looks terrible. I mean, it took forever to load. It loaded me straight into the battle bus. It didn't go to the lobby or whatever. And yeah, my character model hasn't loaded. Okay. There we go. Can we do anything? No? Okay, I give up on this. Rocket League ran without any issues, and the graphics settings were actually set fairly high. Looks pretty good. There were some frame drops here and there, but these could probably be mitigated by turning some of the graphics settings down. CSGO ran perfectly fine, with settings in the medium to high range. Team Fortress 2 also ran very well, with most of the graphics settings in the high range. CAN IT RUN CRISIS?! Yes, it can, and actually fairly decently. Most of the graphics settings were up in the medium to high range. Uh, the frame rate was a little bit low when I was recording, but that's because I had the settings turned up. I'm sure if I turned the graphics settings down a little bit, uh, things could be a little bit smoother. And all of these, with the exception of Fortnite, were running at the native resolution of the display, which is 1440 by 900 So that's not too bad. Of course, there's plenty of other games out there I could have tested. But I ended up not testing them because I just didn't want to put in the time. Besides, this video is going on pretty long as it is. So while these machines can do most tasks that I asked of it, and it actually ran a few newer games without too many hiccups, would I recommend one of these things? Absolutely not. You can get many other ThinkPads from the time period and a little bit newer that have much better performance, that are a lot more portable even while still retaining the classic ThinkPad design, and you'll be able to get parts for them easily and cheaply. And remember earlier how I said that you could upgrade the graphics card in one of these machines with an asterisk? You're pretty much limited to either of the two Quadro FX cards that I mentioned for each model. Because like every other ThinkPad from the time period, the W700 and 701 have a whitelist on what graphics card you can put in. And if you put something in that Lenovo doesn't like, the system won't start. As for the external graphics options, like I said, you can't use a ThinkPad Advanced Dock with this because it's just physically incompatible. You could, however, hook up an external GPU through the use of one of the Express Card slots, as you can get an Express Card to PCI Express adapter on eBay. The W700 series is a laptop line that I would only recommend to those diehard ThinkPad enthusiasts like myself, or somebody who just wants a good conversation piece, or a few head turns whenever they try to pull this thing out at a Starbucks. They're great machines, they're incredibly well built. I mean, there's the old saying that if you drop a ThinkPad on the floor, you should be worried about the floor, and with the W700, I could actually believe that. 
but these machines just aren't practical because of how rare they are and how expensive they are. But if you want to satisfy your curiosities about this machine and you find one for a decent deal on eBay or Craigslist or somewhere else, then by all means pick one up. They're incredible machines, despite being horribly outdated nowadays. Just keep in mind that you might break your back trying to carry one of these around. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.